This is the 18th season of Bass Talk Live. With your host, Matt Pangrad. BTL is brought to you by Lorenz, Bass Cat Boats, AFCO, Strike King Lures, Sunline, Big Bite Baits, Spro, X Zone Lures, Gamakoxi, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, and Pro Guide Bass. PTL, coming at ya! Good morning and welcome to another exciting edition of BTL Bass Talk Live where we are going to talk about bass fishing. It's supposed to be like cold. The crappie are supposed to be like rolling and biting now. There's supposed to be brisk coolness in the air. I'm still in the uh, shorts with the new fall collection of uh, AFCO. They went with some like natural outdoor colors and I probably should have gone with the short sleeve. It is really hot here in uh, Oklahoma. Uh, a little bit overcast, but uh, man, I'm ready for that brisk fall weather. I'm ready for the uh, umbrella rigs. I'm ready for the crappie to start getting suspended out there. Uh, and another sure sign of that is that the, the seasons are over. Uh, the Elite Series season, the BPT season, the Toyota season just wrapped up. We talked about uh, Kyle Hall with an impressive win on uh, Gunnersville to push his season earnings in 2022 to $425,000. Uh, and he is buddies with uh, Dakota Eber. I was actually talking with our guest today a little bit about that backstage before we had him on. And I would be, I didn't have a chance to do it, but I would be interested to say if you were to add Kyle Hall and Dakota's Eber, Dakota Eber's winnings uh, with MLF this year, I, I mean, you'd be over three quarters of a million dollars between those two. Which is, uh, which is insane. Uh, those guys kind of came in and uh, and really took the uh, took the season uh, by storm. Uh, also, the MPFL, uh, we mentioned that yesterday. Uh, that wrapped up with a slugfest uh, down in Florida, and I really like seeing the October tournaments in Florida. I think we get a little bit numb, a little bit conditioned to the St. Johns River, Okeechobee, uh, Harris Chain, Toho, all that in. January, February, March, uh, and it's a little bit different uh, in the fall there. So, uh, really liked seeing that. So, one of the things that a lot of people do during the off season is, uh, well, not a lot. If you're a professional angler, if you're weekend, you should get better. You should always be improving. If you look at uh, what is it, uh, KVD's motto is, "It's all about the attitude." Ike's is, uh, "Never give up." Uh, Polinick always talks about it. Wheeler always, like best guys in the world always talk about how a lot of it is mental, about how a lot of it is learning every time uh, they hit the water. And uh, today's guest uh, has kind of taken that and uh, is, is, I think this is, I don't want to call it a trend, but there's a number of people in the issue are saying, hey, bass fishing is way behind when it comes to getting better. Like we have baits and the companies are saying, hey, here's lures to help you catch more fish. Here's rods and reels to help you land more fish. But the the process, I think that might be kind of a key word in today's show. The process is often overlooked. Uh, and someone who has seen a lot of the process and how it gets done and how the best guys in the world have got it done, uh, and he is, was, is, we'll see what he, where, he, where he ranks himself currently of his fishing skill. That'd be a great intro. There is uh, the one and only former elite series angler, former FLW tour angler and current MLF analyst. Did I get all that right? Marty stone. Yeah. Concentrate on the current angler. That's the key. Your video went away on me. I know. I don't, uh, let me see what we can do. Okay. And then your audio got scratchy. This is just a horrible intro for it. How about now? All right, oh, your video's oh, back. No. Now it's gone. We 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 practiced this for uh, for twenty minutes before, and it was absolutely golden. And we had him back in. How about, How now, about now, Marty? I got yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Did I get no, that intro uh, right? 
intro focus on the color analyst major league fishing non-emphasis on bass angle right that was a that was 21 years of of average it's a little bit above average I and mean, you got almost a million dollars in earnings you got what a, a tour win and a top 150 win i mean you made a you made a good living at it you were one of the guys marty when i started this thing back in 2007 working for mark jeffries I had, a, I had a nice little run. I had about a 10-year run. My sponsor resume absolutely outpaced my fishing ability. That's a claim to fame. So that, that was good. It, it was a good run. It was a good run. I was grateful for it. Got to do a lot of cool things. But I'm really embracing this next chapter. Uh, one of the things that I remember, uh, Jeffries had a uh, feature back, at, back in the day with uh, Bassone called In the House. And we yep. went to the different guys' houses. And if I remember, you were featured in one of the first In the House episodes. That would have had to have been like 2007, 2008, uh, where he came out to your house and basically did like a Cribs episode. You remember that? He did. He did. And, and also, too, Mark was one of the very first one. Remember, we had that E50 on High Rock where we covered it from the water. I was doing some on-the-water color analyst with you guys at that particular event. And Mark was... He was way out in front of what we're doing now. Was that your first color analyst stuff was actually with the Bassone and, and Jeffries? 100%. 100%. Because you're a Carolina guy, and I guess you didn't yep. qualify for that. Oh, that, rub it in. Rub it in. That is, that's a true statement. Well, you're the one who called yourself an average egg. I was trying to give you as much credit, but I'm just saying that's how that came about. Those those uh, those were the majors. That was the one like that Peter T won half a million yep. dollars on and they Dave had Wobble what one gosh yeah. that's a name from the past it really is so uh, th that particular year i finished 51st in the elite series they only took the top 50 so i come back home and here's a little bit of a brag i come back home and fish local events and at the local events me and my team partner we entered six of them we won the championship won three regular season events and then finished in the top five another two while everybody was at work i was practicing at the end of the event, when we won the boat and motor, first boat and motor I ever won, my buddies around home said, man, when are you going back on tour? I said, boys, I was 51st. Think about what the boys in front of me were capable of. I went back home and took all their money and toys, and then they <laughs> sent me back out on the road. <laughs> uh, I would venture to say, and this is not a shot at Mark, it's it's more about his, uh, his ability uh, to get things said, I would venture to say that there was no money involved in that first time gig as an analyst with Mark Jeffries hey, and that. So no, it, no, you I were paid, paid in him. exposure. <laughs> I think I paid him. <laughs> it interesting. I did not realize that that was the first one. So uh, that was my just to first claim to fame on the water major at High Rock, and then we went to some other little lakes in Greensboro. Uh, golly, I can't even remember who won that one. That wasn't Rambanis, was it? You're right. You're that's a great memory. You're you're dead on. Absolutely. He won it in that little lake called Lake Brant in Greensboro, North Carolina. Because the guys qualified at High Rock and then we moved them to a little mud hole in Greensboro called Lake Brant or Lake Towns or one of those. Do you do that boom, on a frog? Laid the boom down. A frog, and if I'm not mistaken, he was a there was a bedfish or two involved as well, too. Okay, and I think that's when Jeffries gave Fred the Boom Boom nickname based off of the boxer Boom Boom Margeris or something like that, and it was Boom Boom he Out already There the had the Boom Boom nickname from that mess he did out in California when we went to Clear Lake and just laid it on us one year out there, too. Okay, that's fantastic stuff. So that would have been 8, 9, and then... Uh, I just don't think a lot of people know the backstory of this, Marty. So then MLF which was just major league fishing. It was a standalone deal, a made for TV event that kicked off in 2011. Correct. We filmed in 10 at Lake Amistad and in 11 was our first year that we aired and we brought some little skinny kid in from FLW. All the other anglers were elite series guys. We only brought one FLW guy in little bitty skinny runny kid named Brent Ayler. Ayler come in there and beat everybody's tail at Amistad and ended up winning the whole event. And that was in 2011 that we aired that particular cup. I remember that. That was when uh, the Alabama rig was running amok and everyone was, ch was, was chucking the rig on Amistad. Now, here's the fact. You were supposed to be fishing in that event, right? That's correct. That is correct. Me and Don Ruck. So 
it was myself. I actually called Gary Klein and and, and Boyd Duck, and, and we were getting nowhere. We had this idea. We had it since '09, and we were just spinning our wheels how to launch it, how to do everything. And and '08 and '09 happened. Now we're trying to get funding. We were hoping to have funding for a complete six series events. We ended up with enough money to do one event and we were still struggling along and we were heading out to fish Fort Gibson or we we're going to fish the river. If I'm not mistaken, Fort Gibson got rained out. Was I the called Biffle up Don tournament. Rucks out of the blue. That's right. I called Don Rucks out of the blue and I said, Hey, this is what we've got. And Don was the general manager at Bass there prior to that. Um, and he was also a part of Team Seco. I called up Don and I said, here's our, here's our thought. Here's our idea. Here's what we want to do. Here's the guys we've got. And it was 15, 16 of us. And, and Rux, I'll never forget, his first statement to me was, you've got this group of anglers to agree to anything. And the answer was yes, which was shocking. Normally, anglers can't even agree upon the weather. So we met with Jim Wilburn and Don Rux at a hotel room in a back alley somewhere. And Wilburn looked at us after we shared the vision. He said, I think this thing's got some sticking power. Well, I was at the point I was either going to retire or keep fishing. So I retired right after that. I told the guys, I said, hey, I'm done. I'm, I'm getting ready to step away from fishing. But I'm still an owner of that. Rux calls me about four months later. He said, this thing's going to go. I'm like, awesome. I'm going to fish. He's like, nope, you're going to be my color analyst. We argued for four months. Obviously, I lost the argument. And I'm grateful that I did because Don Rux had his vision. He said, your brand will be bigger as a color analyst than it ever was fishing. So he knew my limitations as a fisherman, and he knew my gift of being able to take 30 minutes to say hello. He's like, I want you on the water with these guys. And then that first or the next year, then you did fish one year of the, of the FLW tour and did the color analyst. Yep. Yep, I come out of retirement because I didn't know if we were going to have a full season. If we were going to have a full season and this was going to become a full-time gig, then I was going to be all about fishing. So I jumped back out there. Everybody said, you'll never get your sponsors to pony back up. Every sponsor I had on my retirement ended up joining me on the FLW side. Grateful to Kathy Fiddle, Bill Taylor. They welcomed me with open arms. And the way we went, I had up and down the year. There was another any kid from California that kept me from winning at Lake Hartwell named Brent Ayler. That name seems to be reoccurring here. He won the Hartwell event. And that year I had a chance to actually win after a year of retirement. And then if I remember correctly, weren't you do were you a financial advisor? Something something with yeah. like big money and suits <laughs> and ties, like every day, like dealing with stuff. Like that was the, the next career after the fishing, right? So after 2011 and 12, and then we knew it wasn't going to be a full-time gig on the major league fishing. I, again, I, that's the reason I come back. I had my financial advisor and the branch manager. They recruited me in to work for Morgan Stanley. I'd, I'd worked with them for years. They were the people I used and they were crazy enough to hire me. And I was crazy enough to do it. And I did that for seven and a half years and probably the single hardest decision I ever made professionally ever was leaving Morgan Stanley to do this full time. I was on one of the bigger teams in the complex. I was leading the complex for five years in a row for new net assets acquired. Uh, we were good. I had plenty of time off. They let me come do the cups, but it got to a point. It was either going to have to be full time or no time with major league fishing. And Matt leaving fishing was 10 times easier than leaving Morgan Stanley. Our team was that good. And our clients, most of them were friends, all of them become family. Man, that was that was a hard choice for me. And it was not one I took lightly. It took me months to decide to come do this full time. But I ended up leaving Morgan Stanley after seven and a half years. And then here I am, Major League Fishing, color analyst, hanging out with the boys. All right. Well, we kind of went down a little bit of memory lane there, but I think there's a lot of that backstory <laughs> where people who just log on to the MLF now or see you on TV or see you doing, you know, the the analyst for it don't realize how many different little kind of twists and turns there were on the road. If you want to relive those days, uh, I I have nope. found. Uh, oh no, we're gonna relive oh, those God. days. I did find a, uh, and we'll get into this sponsorship wise. This is currently on eBay, folks. Uh, this is the Advance Ooh. Auto Parts. These guys kick bass. Advance Auto Parts team, I believe, from 2010. And if you look on the, uh, there it is. There's a little kick bass. There's three. There's uh, there's Greg Hackney. Uh, 
that was before the intimidating Greg Hackney. He had his hair combed. He was smiling, arms crossed. There's uh, John Cruz, and there's Marty Stone right there on the side. That would be a size medium uh, in a beefy tee, but uh, 10 bucks on eBay. I think I think you ought to get on that. Uh, you ought to get on that one. Mark. You know, it, if my name wasn't on there, it'd be worth twenty nine ninety nine because the two, other two anglers you talked about, they're they're, hammered. they're great anglers in their own right. So I'm obviously the one that's dragging the value of that thing down. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So uh, we're going to tie all this together throughout this show. Uh, I want to ask you and and obviously get you on. It's very mm-hmm. timely with a lot going on on uh, the BPT. You yeah. have announcements of new uh, uh, Red Crest through like 2095. Like I'll be 60 by the time the last <laughs> Red Crest that they announced came out. I kind of want to get your thoughts on that. I want to go through uh, kind of your thoughts on what's going on with the BPT as far as seeing some dominant anglers uh, that yep. have emerged, uh, and, and really taken advantage of the format for the past four years. And then how that changes, uh, with, uh, going back to, uh, catch way release best five this year, uh, your thoughts on that. And then I want to get into the second half of the show. BTL is all about the three E's entertain, educate, uh, and engage. And I probably should have saved the education till the last E, but it's the middle E, but we're going to talk about the education at the end, because I think that's something really yeah. important and something that you offer now. Uh, but are, are you good to just dive right into the, right into the nitty gritty of the BPT now? Because that's what everyone's talking about. Dude, they told us for four years, it's every fish counts. We've heard you talk about it. Now they're going back to five. What's up with that, Marty? Let's, let's jump into it, man. Um, you know, mixed emotions on that when I, when I heard the announcement because I know it was an angler vote. They took a lot of fan polls, and nobody took this decision lightly. Um, I still believe every fish counts will show the best. I've always said when we do every fish counts, we showcase greatness, and you can't hide bad. And, and that's what that format does. If you're having a bad day, it will show you you're having a bad day. If you're having a great day, it will show you that. Now, that being said, when we first started this 2019 Every Fish Counts, one of the promises we made to the general public, to the fans, to all of the fishing world was stay tuned. We're going to have this technology available to the masses very soon. To nobody's fault, no blame, none, nothing whatsoever. We haven't been able to deliver on that promise. So for the average everyday angler, for the weekend anglers, for the regional anglers, for the aspiring pros, we created a format that was so new and so different, nobody else can go out and duplicate it. So if you're, if we're a sport, if we're a sport, we can have that argument any other time, but if we're a sport, there's not one sport that isn't out there that an average fan cannot go duplicate. If you're an NBA guy, you can go play your church league Wednesday night basketball games. If you're a baseball guy, you got your Tuesday night commercial league softball Mm -hmm. if you're a football game you can get in a flag football league you can go duplicate what your favorite sport is with our catch weigh and release and every fish counts the average angler cannot go do that so i really believe we created a sport we created a format that technology has not kept up with or caught up to so with that being said i think we need i think the right decision was let's dial it back Let's get it to where the fans can relate. You know, the, the one thing I've learned over the years of watching these guys and, and doing all the, the live that I do, at the very beginning, I'm like, wow, fans really care about the guys who don't get to practice or they don't get to share information. or they don't, Fans don't give two rips about any of that. What they care about is watching good fishermen fish. And the format, catch, weigh, and release, it, there is a lot of drama. There is a ton of drama. We're going to lose a little bit of that. But now our fans can relate. Our fans can relate to the best five. And until we as a league catch up technology-wise so we can offer this to the masses, I think for our Bass Pro Tour, it's the right call. And I also believe we're still not going to lose it because during the cup events, with our team series, and also for the heavy hitters, the events that our anglers are in league boats, we're going to go back to that format. So in a way, uh, as I cover it and I look for the nuances of covering it, we're going to get the best of both worlds. We're going to, on our regular season, Fast Pro Tour, Red Crest, all that, we're going to allow the anglers to do exactly what the everyday fan does. Go out, catch your best five, 
catch, weigh, release. I, I do think that's the future. Catch, weigh, and release is absolutely the future. Five seems to be the number everybody's stuck on. Let's do it. Here's what I also know, too. It's not going to matter. Best anglers are going to still win. My best anglers on the Major League Fish on the Bass Pro Tour, I don't care if it's a one fish limit. I don't care if it's a five. I don't care if it's a hundred and one. The best anglers still win. I completely disagree that we're going to lose some drama, Marty. Why do you think we'll lose drama with the five fish? I think there will be more drama with the five fish. I think there'll be way okay. more drama with the five fish. Okay. I'll, I'll walk you back a little bit. Okay. There was a tournament at Ufall, Alabama. Jordan Lee basically zeroed the first day. Uh -huh. Second day, he goes a gazillion miles up the river, fishes a place that he went as a co-angler back in the BFL days. He comes back and wins the round. You get that far behind in the best five, you're not making that comeback. I disagree. You will not, I disagree. You there will was not. a Bassmaster Classic on Conroe, Marty, where Jordan Lee was 15 pounds back going into the final day. He breaks down going under the bridge. He makes back a 14-pound deficit and raises the Classic trophy. There was another event uh, at Okeechobee. Jay Lee, same guy, zero okay. the first day. Rolls up in the canal the second day. Goes up in the canal. Hadn't been there since his college, he self-admitted drinking days, and <laughs> rolls in there and absolutely blows up and wins the round again. I'm telling you, Matt, we're going to lose some of that drama. I hope you're right and I'm wrong. I really do. I'll, I'll raise you right Randy right. Howell on the Spring Creek Bridge in the Gunnersville Bassmaster Classic, down 12 pounds. Something in his head tells him, take a freaking yep. right. He turns around. He catches a six and a half on a bladed jig a quarter mile from where his house now sits, makes an 11-pound comeback and wins. So I think you're going to your see point, more. To your point, they had something. For the guys at zero or come in with one or come in with two, in the Bass Pro Tour format with every fish counts, they could come back. A guy zeroes, catches one, catches two yeah. against this group, against this group of anglers, you right. can forget it. But you, do you it, not think not if we're going to treat this as a sport, <clears throat> Marty, are there not mm -hmm. are there not situations where you have UConn's women, women's basketball where this thing's over in the first quarter and now it's, dang, let's see if they can beat them by 60? I mean, there's some so, sort of... There's some sort of draw to that, too. Like, I know when I turn on a game and it's like 18 to 1 in the sixth inning, I'm watching right. that game even though I know who <laughs> right. wins because I just want to see how bad the ass kicking is. You know, here's, we've got four years under this format to know the numbers. We know the numbers of every day of every event that we've got. And it's going to be really interesting to see, do our numbers sustain? Do they get better? Do they fall off because of the format? Now, I'll go back to, if we're going to do the sports analogy, let's mm -hmm. do a true sports analogy. Name me one sport that limits what you can score. I think cricket might do that, Marty. <laughs> I said a sport. <laughs> <laughs> that limits? I mean, uh, you're, talking, uh, you're talking run rules and women's college softball is the only thing that comes up to my mind where they've got a, they got a, a, a mercy go. rule, basically, and that's it. So if I'm going to buy into this, and I am, I'm buying into the best five. And, okay. and I, I hope you're right on the drum because it is the right thing to do. The fans have said it. And, and it wasn't it wasn't a 90-10. Our anglers wanted it. Again, it wasn't a 90-10 vote. So there is some mixed emotion. I'm glad we're keeping the every fish counts on the, the team series and also right. on heavy hitters. But if we're going to buy into this, then we're going to give up some things to gain some things. But the thing that I buy in the most now is every angler, no matter what level you float your boat, mm -hmm. we now can relate and they can relate. Now, here's where I won't go. People go, oh, that's tradition. That's a bunch of crap. Because here's tradition. Tradition is 15 fish and knock the heads off. Then tradition got to be 10 fish, throw them in a the cooler. Then tradition got to be seven fish. Maybe we ought to try to keep one alive. And then we evolved into five. So don't give me this mess about five is tradition. It's not. Someone needs to go back and look at the history of bass fishing of that. That's not now. Are we going to make it more relatable to the average everyday fisherman, no matter what level? 100% true. 100% true. And with that being said, I do believe until we get technology that can go to the masses, this is the right move. That's good stuff, Marty. That is true. Uh, I, th I think there's a lack of understanding of what has happened over the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. We're 
remarkably fortunate too in this young sport and i kind of become a, his, a history buff because i ran with harold <laughs> allen for the first eight years so he was like hey spread the hell that i got yeah. it but uh you know uh i just did a thing obviously larry nixon regardless of where he fishes it just brought it up because he announced that he was going to the elite series but you go back and you talk and then you do these guys that were around in the first five years of this thing and were fishing for the 15 fish and the seven and the eight or how dude they're still around like they could talk about that like i mean you've got a hundred years of experience between different angles you look over at the bpt between i just had this uh, talk with jody white you throw uh mark davis paul elias shaw grigsby uh tommy biffle gary klein dude there's like 150 years of tournament experience dating back to pretty much within five years of this thing started it's amazing how we have that and i think fishing has done a horrible job unlike the other sports of capturing the history and making it relevant to today's deal. Like I always go on the thing, Marty, like they're like, Oh, well, the BPT changes their format all the time and blah, blah, blah. Go back and look at the history of fishing. There hasn't been a right. format for bass or MLF since the beginning of time that hasn't tried bracket style, whole courses, zeroing of the weights, head to head, three days zero. They've done everything on every level for every organization since Ray Scott invented this thing. I fished 21 years. I guarantee I had a format change 18 of those 21. It's just part of what we do. Yeah. I, now, the hope is here, we're doing some things. We at Major League Fishing are doing some things that we're going to have some sticking power. And I, and I do believe that. I believe the five fish will stick. I love what we did with the invitationals of how you qualify into that. Toyota Series is solid. BFL is solid. You know, if we go back and look at changes, I'd say one of the most unchanged things in all of the sport of bass fishing is the BFL Series. The BFL gets you to the All-American. Back in Redman days, it got you to the All-American. If you look at one single entity in bass fishing that has probably changed the least, I would say it would be BFLs. Yeah. I mean, there's guys with their Redman spittoons on there. Do you have a Redman spittoon on your mantle behind not. you there? No. no I, I've got a Redman trophy um, back there from winning one of the Redman events, made the All-American. And you look at most of our good young anglers too, there's an all-American qualification somewhere on that resume. It's like a rite of passage. It is. It used to be so much bigger. And I mean, even even towards the end when, when FLW had it before MLF bought it, that, like I said, I, I thought the all-American, so like I tried to make it early, like 2012, 2013. Right. And like in, in my tournament, like on the final day, like I think Jim Tut might have missed a tour event to fish the regional because he made the final day because mm -hmm. making the All American was so important to him. Well, uh, it, it goes back. I don't think the All American is any less important. I think now all events become less important. And here's what I mean by that. Back in the day, back in Larry Nixon, there's a per one of my favorite people, one of my all time friends, mm -hmm. Denny Brower, those guys. Back in those days, we had six invitationals. And we had the classic. So we, you and I lived for every, I mean, we would digest an invitational for a month, month and a half. Now over here at Major League Fishing, we're running 250 plus events a year. Every event's an afterthought within a day or five after it because we're moving on to the next thing. I, I don't think any event is any less important, but I think from the volume of events that, that's out there now, whether it's us, or whether it's fast, the sheer volume, makes all events less important that's a great point i mean that's just a social media world too all the different platforms youtube everything is snap 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 now and it, it's yeah that's a great point marty i don't think it has anything it's Look society at baseball it, it's 160 events it's the first game any less or more important than 159th in your game out of the playoffs no but because you get down to the end now everybody focuses on the end whether it's red crest whether it's classic uh, whether it's heavy hitters, whether it's some of these unique events. I definitely don't think the All-Americans any less important for the anglers getting there. And I also think it shows an industry standard that angler's got some talent, that angler's got some skill, because that's a hard event to get to. But we're talking about change. To me, that's one of the structured events that has changed the least of anything that we've had in our sport, because it works. Good stuff. All right, let's... Uh... Let's continue with stuff that's changing, then we'll take a break. We'll come back with MJS Academy and some of the BPT changes. But obviously, one of the big changes during the offseason has been the uh, 
pro circuit to the invitationals uh yep. a little bit of cutback public perception of that is ooh what's going on with the invitationals now uh you are an analyst for that you're in studio you've seen those guys mm-hmm. i mentioned two anglers uh well dakota ebear was on the uh, bpt this year but we also saw what he did on the uh, pro circuit this past year you have crazy good anglers there kyle hall matt becker gray buck uh we saw what spencer shuffield has been able to do this past year a lot of young talent at anglers where is the future of the invitationals moving forward how does that fit into the puzzle work of professional fishing in your opinion now i actually if, if i was running major league fishing obviously i don't god help us god thank you for <laughs> that too but if i was running it um tackle warehouse pro circuit probably would have never existed last year if, if i'm running if i'm running i absolutely think the invitationals is the right right move right place to go and here's why uh numerous reasons one Financially, it's just a good decision. Two, okay, I get it. The guys over there that's fishing the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit, they lost their title. And, and, I, and I hear them, and I feel them, and, and, and I do understand that. But when you're talking about titles, we got to a point where we're, we're using that word and term way too loosely. You've got Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit title winner. You've got the Red Crest winner. You've got the Bassmasters Classic winner. You've got the General Tire World Championship winner. We got too many champions. All right, each league needs to have its own champion at the highest level. The Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit title event and Red Crest, in my opinion, was competing against itself. So, what is the title? What are the invitationals for? They're qualifiers. That's what they are. They're qualifiers into the Bass Pro Tour. If you want to go to the Bass Pro Tour, it's invitationals. Here's why I like what we did. It's a decent entry fee. It's a good payout. And there's three days of TV coverage. So as you're a Matt Becker, as you're a Spencer Sheffield, as you're a Dakota Ebear, as you're getting ready to come to the Bass Pro Tour, we're helping you build your brand with the TV exposure that you're going to earn. If you're performing well, the camera's going to find you. So you're building that exposure. So when you get to us at the Bass Pro Tour, one, there's some brand awareness. Two, you've been used to having the camera in the boat. And three, you finished high enough in a very competitive group that you're ready. I've always said, and I remember back in my day in the elites, we get anglers come to us, they'd have three good opens, and then all of a sudden they show up in the elites. They weren't ready. But I would be the first one to put my arm around their shoulder and go, hey, man, hang in there. You can do this. That was code for bring me your entry fee for five more years because we're going to tap your tail. Those anglers 90% of the time, you go through a sixth event, a nine event, whatever side, when you go through multiple events and you finish in the top eight, top 10, you're ready for that next level. And I like what we're doing there. I really think it's the right progression because now all roads lead to the Bass Pro Tour. All Americans, BFLs, you go to Toyota. Toyotas, you get to the invitations. The invitations, you get to the top, and the top is the Bass Pro Tour. Yeah, it's good stuff. I mean, I could say having fished like 20-some opens over the last three years, I believe that you have to go through just a a, uh, a certain amount of just mental and emotional irreparable damage before <laughs> you just <laughs> accept, accept the fact. I mean, if you're unless you're a, a freak show point one percenter, I mean, there's a lot of like mental stuff that you have to go through that you don't go through just in a short little amount of time. Here, here's the reality, too. I, I, I do believe this. You're a young angler. You're an aspiring angler. You're wanting to do this for a living. This, this wants to be your thing. Financially, back when I was fishing, most of our entry fees, now I, I lived through some of the $5,000 entry fees. For, for a long time, we were $1,200 to $2,000, 2500 somewhere in there. Now, as a young angler, unless you've got a trust fund, you've got about a, you've got about a two- to four-year window. Also, industry-wise, you've got about a two to four year window to make an impact. And if you don't, sponsors, as hard as it is to gain dollars out there, they're going to look at you as a grinder. Everybody wants the new best angler. Everybody wants a Dakota Ebear. Everybody wants a a Matt Becker. Everybody wants a Spencer Sheffield. Everybody loves the next new great one. Man, you've been out there three, four, five years, and you're still grinding away, and you finally get that break. I don't know if you're going to get that break sponsorship wise. So when you get there, there being the elites, Bass Pro Tour, mm-hmm. wherever it is you're getting to, 
you better be ready and you better make an impact because if you don't, you will quickly be forgotten and they're going to move on. That's good stuff. All right. It is Tuesday, November 8th. We are talking with MLF analyst Marty Stone. We're going to get into a little bit of the BPT stuff going on, and then we're going to get into MJS Academy. Uh, I have uh, I have the word process circled and underlined on my little cheat sheet for the day. So that's coming up. Marty Stone, BTL on a Tuesday. We'll be back right after this. Your key to better fishing this season is Elite FS. Now available at a new lower price. Get Elite FS9 today for $9.99. And we'll throw in a CMAP reveal chart, our premium mapping solution for free. Elite FS works with all state-of-the-art Lorenz sonar, from chirp, side scan, and down scan imaging with fish reveal to high-resolution active target live sonar. Elite FS9 and CMAP reveal. Offer ends August 31st. The new Puma STS has been redesigned from the ground up. With the angler, design, function, and performance in mind, nothing on this new offering was compromised, and the only thing carried over from the previous version is the name. Based on the soft touch series hull that started with the flagship Jaguar, this new model is nimble and performs incredibly well at all speeds with either a 250 or 300 horsepower engine. Featuring a new 96 inch wide body footprint, this hull measures out at 20 foot 7 inches in length. Industry-leading design coupled with tournament-winning performance. The Puma STS from Bass Cat. Feel the rush. We're just about ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. Get in order. Once again, Drew Cook is in the driver's seat. When you're catching fish for a living, you can't let a little cold, rain, heat, humidity, or anything else get in the way of a payday. I wear APCO. Any fish, any water. The KVD 100 Jerkbait. 15 different colors. A perfect combination of roll, wiggle, and flash. Increased castability. 3D eyes. Premium black nickel hooks. KVD. Tie one on. Striking lures. Are you looking to install your own fishing electronics? Well, the Bass Tank is here to help you. The solution is the Bass Tank Power Harness. It takes the guesswork out of installation. No more voltage issues or interference. Designed by an engineer so that you can get professional results right there in your own garage. Installation done right with the help of the Bass Tank Power Harness. You can feel confident knowing that your installation was done right. The Bass Tank Power Harness. Give us a call or order yours today at thebasstank.com. Elite Series Pro Daryl Gleason here. My Pro Guide batteries keep me going on those long tournament days and long practice days. Always plenty of juice, never fail. The best part about Pro Guide batteries, it's the people behind the company. They have over 40 years experience in the battery business, keeping all of us fishermen out on the water longer, catching more fish. Check them out at ProGuideBatteries.com. What's up, Bass Talk Live fans? Brandon Polinick here. And ever since I won a couple Bassmaster Elite Series events on X-Zone Lures, I've been getting a bunch of questions of what makes them so special and different and really, the truth is, it's in the details. The little details, things like no cheap fillers in their plastic, that gives you more lifelike action, more realistic and vibrant colors. But don't just take my word for it. Go to www.exonlures.com and check them out for yourself. All right, welcome back. BTL on a Tuesday. MLF analyst, longtime professional bass angler and teaching and instructor now. Marty Stone uh, joining us from his home, and it's North Carolina, right, Marty? Yep, right on the North Carolina, Virginia line. North Carolina. Uh, All right, uh, we're getting the. I'm working on it. We get the audio there. We're we are slogging through uh, through <laughs> Marty's internet connection. We've had like a great audio connection. Sometimes you get a little bit behind, but it's perfect for me. I'm happy with it here. But uh, I you were supposed to be on last week. Uh, and I don't know how much you want to mm-hmm. get into this, but you you're you're built a new house. It looks like you sent me a couple pictures, and they're 
uh, there was water where there wasn't supposed to be water and to just succinctly match yeah, it up. I, right? Unfortunately, we had a, we had a builder that thought that I wanted to pull under the house instead of outside the house. So we, we've been fighting uh, water under the house, but had a couple of really good friends come in for the rescue and, and did a nice job. And we got that taken care of. And we just, we got a beautiful home up here at Curl Lake, nicer than I deserve. And man, I've always loved this area. been traveling up here for over 45 years. Shows how old I am. And um, now we're here. And, and the good thing with Major League Fishing, they could give two yahoos where I live at as long as I can get close to an airport. And Raleigh-Durham's less than an hour away, so I get to fly into Tulsa and see your great state. Yeah, you do. Oh, uh, oh the video went away there. But you do get to yeah. uh, you do get to spend a lot of time in Oklahoma these days. Man, I'm about 22 weeks. And, and you, you're talking about your seasons. I, I disagree with you. Y'all have three seasons. Freezing extremely hot in football there's nothing in between it's oh four seasons tornado yeah yeah the ex- it usually goes from extremely hot to rain and then just straight ice that t- that typically I, I is what i would call standard oklahoma weather is 70 degrees to death defying ice yeah it's extremely cold extremely hot football tornado there's your four seasons in, in oklahoma uh, all right, let's get on it. One of the things, and I don't think I've announced this, and I don't think this has ever been done in the sport before, is Redcrest. We obviously know that's coming to kind of your backyard there, one of my favorite fisheries, which would be Lake mm-hmm. Norman uh, in North Carolina uh, in March. Now, will Redcrest 4 be five fish, or will that be every fish because they qualified under the every fish format? You know, that's like, I don't have an answer to that. I really don't. I, I, I'm waiting to hear. I, I have a feeling it, it's going to be, you can make an argument for either they qualified under every fish, but if we're going to make a change, again, I don't run the joint, but if we're going to make a change, let's make a change. Let's go to the best five. And I know two anglers right now. If you do the best, well, you do the best five, Andy Montgomery just got a lot better. Brian Thrift, I don't care if you do one, five, or 105, Thrift is going to be a handful of normal. Yeah, is I was you know every tournament there's favorites in, but as far as championship events, I would say that Brian Thrift, Redcrest Lake Norman, uh, March eighth through twelfth. Name me a tournament. <laughs> yeah, name me a tournament outside of like Casey Ashley on Hartwell, where yeah. there's more of a favorite in an event that's ever been held at the professional level. Uh, maybe Edwin Evers on Grand. Yeah, no, but you had Jason Christie there, too. But Jason wasn't in this tournament. I'm talking about Edwin Evers this year at Red Crest. I mean, he oh, came yeah. in with a lot of pressure on him. He came yeah, in, that's he right. He still had a top 10. Well, I mean, no, that, I still it, say, what, you had Elam in it? You had Zach Burge in it? Yep, yep. But and yeah, yep, yeah, yeah Edwin probably. <laughs> yeah, you had Edwin, and I guess you do. And, you and, do have it, but. I think with the every fish format counting, I would really give the advantage to thrift. If we bring it back to five, it opens the whole field up. And again, I go back. I I will still always say this. Every fish counts, especially when we go to a two pound minimum. Every fish counts. We're going to showcase greatness and we're going to expose bad. I made a living out of being bad because I can hide behind the five fish format. I'd go out and catch you nine pounds and catch a five pounder with 20 minutes to go and look like I had a really good day. I I, I did that way too many times. I still disagree with you, Marty. Disagree. I don't think that's bad. I think that's strategy. (laughs) I don't think that that means that you're bad or that you're not. There are certain guys who have a knack for it. That's what, that's what you're designed to do. I mean, dude, you knew you had nine pounds. It's not like you were doing the exact same thing going, maybe I'll catch another pound and a half or you made some sort of adjustment to catch that five pounder. That was skill. No, that was skill that allowed you to be on the advanced auto parts team that allowed you to fish at the elite series. It allowed you to have almost a million dollars in career earnings. You did something there to help you catch that five pounder. So what you're calling a quote unquote lucky five pounder. Why are there guys that always then have a lucky kicker? You would have to do that same thing with Kelly Jordan then. He's had more big bass during his time with bass than anyone else. You're going to look Kelly Jordan in the eye and just be like, dude, you were just lucky under the five fish because the big big bass saved your butt more times than not. Oh, I did that to him many times. <laughs> so I, he, yes, yeah. So we're going to see. We're going to see. But now here's what I do know. 
Uh, let's go back. Remember when we had the FLW Super Tournaments? Yep. And, and we did that three tournament little series there. Yep. yep so yep. now we're back to the best five. Okay. Wheeler won one and finished second twice. It doesn't matter. The great ones, it does not matter. It, you just give them the rules. Lucas, ever since uh, heavy hitters at Kissimmee, it doesn't matter whether it's the best five or the most or all, every fish counts. Michael Neal. Michael Neal is one of the best there is in every fish counts. And oh yeah, by the way, he's one of the back-to-back AOIs when the, in the best five. It does not matter. Now, do I think we've got a couple anglers now that we're going back to the best five that I think it benefits greatly? Yes, I do. I absolutely do. Uh, do I think I have a couple anglers, every fish not counting? They're probably going to have to change up and go back old school a little bit. Yeah, I do. I think we're getting ready to take forward facing sonar, not out of the equation, but it's not going to be the only equation. Really? Now, why is that? Because if you go and look at the elite series and watch the elite series, you're still seeing a bunch in the every in the in the best five. You're still seeing certain events where forward facing sonar dominates. I'm not going to say you're not going to have an event or two, uh, and I didn't do it this year. But up into this year, prior to this year. When I went back and looked at the numbers, I think we were somewhere around 70%. The guys that won the tournaments won them fishing. And, and I go back to the 2020 UFOLA event that Wheeler won with forward facing sonar. That's really when the buzz in my mind started. When he lit them up that championship day and he was talking about forward facing sonar. So up into this year, and this year it was a little heavy for forward facing sonar, but prior to that, it was 65, 70% won just fishing. But when we talked about, when me and JT and Chad talked about forward-facing sonar, it seemed like that's all we talked about. It's a neat element. It's a neat part of what we're going to do. But now that we're going back to the best five, I can see anglers running out there with forward-facing sonar, catching their limit. But there is going to be a lot more guys now focusing down the bank, boat docks, old school, swim bait, jig, more power we're going to see bigger baits, bigger fish. I do believe that. I really do believe that. That's interesting. Uh, your percentages that you mentioned are just about right. I had Michael Neal on after he won his second consecutive uh, pro circuit or invitational now angler of the year. And we went through every single tournament over the last couple of years and forward facing sonar was dominant in only about 35, 40% of those events uh, with the every five fish. So that kind of sits with the 40, 60, 70, 30 type, which actually surprised me because, hey, you know, there's certain people out there. If you talk about it, man, there was never a fish caught before forward facing sonar. And now it's not. But I mean, you're still seeing there's Michael Neal back to back angler of the year 70 percent uh of his fish uh were not based on forward facing sonar in the every five fish counts in the in the pro circuit for the last two years and he's he's been pretty dang good at it we'll tell you one thing too that people don't talk about a lot that my forward facing guys that i get the I, I, my rolodex is incredible and the guys spend a lot of time on the phone with me as a prep to do uh everything that we do live and i'm grateful for that but i hear time and time again my guys that are really good on forward-facing sonar, they talk about realizing what fish not to fish for, knowing when to move and how quickly to move, and then being able to identify just by throwing that beam out there what fish to fish for. And more times than not, I will hear them talk about, yeah, it was only six or seven, eight schools, threw the beam out there, knew instantly I couldn't catch them and moved on. Man, that takes time. That takes a lot of time and dedication. And the guys that are good with this technology, they spend hundreds of hours not only knowing how to catch fish using the technology, knowing what fish not to fish for. And we're going to get into all of the time and hours that you've watched these guys do this, which kind of translates into the next segment. But first, I want to get your opinion. Your opinion right now, top yep. three, top three forward-facing sonar anglers on tour. Can't give Total, me three. totally subjective. I'll give you five. You'll give me five. Yep, okay. Yep. Michael, Michael Neal, Michael Neal, Dustin Connell, Jacob Wheeler, uh, Spencer Sheffield, and Kyle Hall. And I, I got to throw Dakota Ebear in there too as well. I'll put them against anybody. Anybody. Edwin, not in your top five. Mm -mm. Nope. Still learning. What makes a and, and that's what you just described being able to identify fish, recognize which ones are are catchable and not 
what did Michael Neal tell you? 70% of the fish he caught, he didn't catch on forward-facing sonar. But when he is catching them on forward-facing sonar and he's recognized that mm-hmm. fish, like the Smith tournament that him and Connell won in two, yeah. they knew what they were looking at. They, the, the good ones, the really good ones, they understand what they're looking at. Look at the smallmouth guys. Everybody I just listed you, really good smallmouth. They yep. know the difference between a drum and a smallmouth. Yeah. They know exactly how these smallmouth are sitting to be able to catch them. What Kyle Hall in Dakota Ebear has done up north on forward-facing sonar is remarkable at this young of age. Hold on, I'm pulling I'll, up. I'll take that six right there. I'm pulling it up there. Uh, I think Zach Burge is pretty dang good at it. Zach Burge has become very good at it, but Zach still has that old school mentality and but he he loves to go down the bank he's got that grit he's got a little bit of damn it about him that's why i mm-hmm. really like him uh but he evolved he evolved in it can't be all about power let's add this if you look at birds too he's the only angler that uses forward facing sonar and he's only got one unit on the front of his boat he has a big screen up there that he'll split the screens he doesn't have double screens up there that's good Think stuff about that one for a minute Mm-hmm. All right, education. This intrigued me uh, when I saw this. The M- MJS Academy on MartyStone.com. And I was looking back, dude, you've had like MartyStone.com and kept it active for probably longer than any other, what I would say, professional angler. Like you're like, most of the guys, it just goes like dormant for like eight years. And then it's like, <laughs> hey, here's my 2011 schedule. Like you've got like a like an active website that you've kept up to date for a long time. No, that's called Doug Cox and Cox Marketing Group, who I do back in the day. I give him all the credit for that. He's helped me keep it active, but he's also, man, we had this vision of doing this academy back in probably 17 or 18. Took me a while to really develop it and and get it to where I wanted. We were getting ready to launch it pre-COVID. COVID hit, the world got screwed up, so that didn't happen, and... I wanted to be closer to lakes where I was living at prior to that in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I was an hour and 10 minutes away from my closest lake. Now I'm five minutes away. And the timing just seemed to be perfect. And I've always enjoyed coaching. Uh, I have a son that plays college sports, college baseball. I have a daughter who was a better athlete than him, but she didn't like to play as much. Um, I've I worked with some really, really, really good baseball players over the years just because baseball is kind of my thing. I work with a lot of people in the coaching side of this on the fishing part. I've always wanted – I felt like this was something that was needed. We're the only sport that doesn't have coaches. It's a fair point. There's guides. There's a lot of really good guides out there. A guide is limited to his knowledge and to his lake. A coach is someone that can take a student and make them better because of all their well-rounded experiences. And Matt, when I'm looking at the, the, the totality of what I've done is fishing, and we talked about it earlier, fish professionally, big deal. A lot of people's done it. Done it at a fairly high level. Had some success. Limited. Um, had a really nice sponsor resume. I'll, I'll, I'll stand beside that. I'm very proud of that. Had mm-hmm. great people to work with. Got to do the TV side now. All right. There's a lot of guys that's done that. But where I have zero equal, one of the few places there's nobody that even comes close to doing what I've done. And that's the amount of time I have spent on the water during the cups, watching the best in the world. And I'm 30 foot away from them. And I'm watching them all day, every day, day after day. And I got to see exactly how they do their job. And I mean, you know, it, being a baseball guy, if you've ever if you ever seen ninety seven to hundred on TV, you know they'll throw up the miles per hour. Ninety seven mile an hour fastball. TV, it doesn't look that fast. Go see it in person, dude. That's gas. It's mm-hmm. absolutely gas. Something that can never be duplicated on TV, no matter how good any of us cover it, is the speed and the efficiency in which the best in the business do their job. I've got to see that. I would give anything to have the knowledge I have now and be 30 years younger. I know I would have been a better fisherman. And what I'm hoping is to be able to take that knowledge for the few that want to do this. This academy is not for everybody, and I realize that. But for a person that's looking for an edge, I truly think I can make them better. I can make them faster. I can speed up the process. 
and hopefully, hopefully eliminate two to four years of a learning curve. That's that's interesting. So typically if you take a, 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 a sport, so you have not just been able to watch what Wheeler and KVD and Jordan Lee, but I was thinking here, so you've, you can do the Andy Montgomery dock skipping with a chatterbait. Uh, you've watched uh, uh, Jeremy Lawyer flip docks in the Ozarks. Uh, you've done the forward facing sonar. Greg Hackney, Hackney, Kevin Greg Hackney, Hackney KVD, Crank. Yeah. Aaron uh, Martins, the great late Aaron Martins. I've watched him from day one throw a jerk bait. Brent Ayler in all his uniqueness. Michael Neal, where Michael Neal didn't get credits going down the bank. He is smooth as butter. Jordan Lee in all his little, all his little instinctual moves. Ot Depot, uh, Takahiro Mori, top five caster in the world. Top really? Five. I didn't know. I would never have guessed that. No, I'll, I'll put Takahiro. You you pick out four. I'll take Tak. Like what type of will. casting? Like the crankbait, spinnerbait, um, vibrating jig, any of cast and wind. You watch him cast and wind the individual targets. Top five in the world. Like smoothness, accuracy, speed, all the above? Yes. How have I not how have I not heard this before, Marty? It, it, it's 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 things like that that people don't realize that I get to watch every day. And and, and my producers that are in the boat with me, I have certain angles that they know it. I have certain angles that I'm watching. They're like, dude, you gotta get away. And I'm like, mm mm, this is good. I don't care what's what's going on. I'm watching it. This is this is good. Um I've watched Edwin just be Edwin. I've watched Ike go Ike. And, and <clears throat> excuse me, there's such a uniqueness with everyone. Up. <clears throat> excuse me. Mm -hmm. K KVD casting distance, Marty, is the one that always got mm -hmm. me when I was out covering it for Bass on it at media events. Like, I don't think people <clears throat> realize how far KVD casts, every single cast, and the, and the intention of, that's not even a word. Intentionality. How intentional he is with every cast, with the body turn, the physics, the way every like that's something that that shocked me is like, no, he's literally outcasting everybody with a plug. So to your point, maximum efficiency with his equipment. Okay, everybody can buy the same rod and reel he uses. He 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 doesn't use anything any different than the public can get. But Kevin gets the maximum amount of his equipment, and he always has. He pushes it to the limits. If you've got Kevin Van Dam on your pro staff and he's helping you design rod, reels, and lures, you can better believe he's pushed that equipment to the limit. And if he puts his name on it, then you know you've got some good equipment. All right. So taking all this into account then, and and it sounds like you're you're leaning back on a lot of baseball experience and other sport experience. I think golf is probably the one. You actually have like famous yep. teachers in golf who, yep. I mean, like, like, oh, he's working with Butch and stuff. Like, <laughs> you know, that doesn't exist. But there's also a lot less, I guess I would say, like variables in those other sports. So you're, mm -hmm. it, it's hard, it, it has to be hard to teach instincts. So how do you get people on the right track to, to know that they're doing the right things to build the intangibles? So when we spend a day, you and I are going to spend a day mm -hmm. on the water. It's going to start off one, I'm not fishing. Okay. I'm, I'm in the passenger seat. I'm in the back of the boat. I'm going to put you through some controlled environments. I'm going to, we're going to sit you on a lake. I'm going to break down some zones. I'm going to have you, Hey, I need you. This is your two hours. Here's your zone. I want to see you go through his process. I want to see you practice. I want to see you break down this water. <clears throat> there's things I've watched really good ones do time and time again. And then there's things I've watched weekend or not the top of the game, the mistakes they make over and over. I've got to clean up those mistakes. Mechanic-wise, I can take a BFL angler and a lot of the really good professional anglers, and there's not going to be a big degree of difference in that. There's not. They're just some of my better BFL anglers. They're, mechanically, they're sound. It's the decision-making process. Does it take you an hour to pick up the trolling motors? Does it take you five minutes? And when you pick it up, where are you going to next? And why are you going there? Mm -hmm. When you roll into a creek, what are you looking for? How quickly can you tell me what the primary cover is? How quickly can you identify where the bait fish is at and how these fish are going to locate? I've got to speed that process up. But for me to do that, I've got to watch you first. I've got to observe. And then I'm going to break the day down in about four different periods 
where we're where I'm going to constantly push you. I'm going to constantly challenge you. I'm going to constantly speed you up. I've got to teach you, you and every individual angler, the worst word in all of bass fishing. The number one worst word, my number one pet peeve, pattern. That's the biggest crock that ever existed. I've got to teach you to find areas. Tournaments are one in areas, not patterns. When you find the right area, you're going to figure out how to catch the fish within that area, and then you're going to tell the world, well, I got a good pattern. No, you didn't. You had a good area. Most anglers miss that. I go back to 95% of all tournaments that are won nationally, they're won in an area. That's a new concept for a lot of people to understand. My job now is to help you identify and get you to understand when you're getting ready for a multi-day event, mm -hmm. you need to have multiple areas. Then you can also need to identify when that area is dried up. Then you need to also identify when a new area could potentially be coming because of a weather change. There's so many nuances in fishing that most anglers don't observe. I've got about a 50 point evaluation grade sheet that I'm going to grade each and every angler on that I work with. And they're going to get to see because when I'm grading the best, man, they're somewhere in that seven to 10 in every category I've got. And if you've got several categories that are two to fours, then we've got places that we need to work on. I'm going to help you identify where your weaknesses are and also be able to identify where your strengths are, but it's going to start with time on the water. And here's what I do think that's unique. There's going to be other anglers that's going to try this. Where there are mm -hmm. limitations is going to happen is, if you come teach me, Matt, you can only teach me what Matt knows because it's what you've been around. When I start instructing, when I start teaching, now I can jump back to all the wealth of knowledge that I've had with all the years and all the hundreds of hours I've had on the water with the best in the business. And now I can start helping you modify based upon mm -hmm. all the different angles I've watched. In, in baseball, you always look for a comp. Comp being, okay, who does this player remind you of? I've got to identify you, your strengths. All right, what successful angler does Matt kind of remind me of? How can I help build on the foundation he's got? In what direction can I lead you to? I hope you like drop shotting and uh, Ned rigging with the spinning rod. If you're taking my advice, <laughs> that, I will. When is. you come up here, you coming up here to Curl Lake for an open, right? Yeah. I will offer this. Let's you and I do a day. It's on me after the event, and let me put you through this. Okay. I'm in. So let's. Do, I want to do this. So I want to show the show. So. Uh, this is going to come full circle here because I asked you this beforehand because you know people are going to go to martystone.com and yep. check this out. And human nature, the first thing you're going to go to is pricing, right? Absolutely. right? So here, let me show. There it is. There's the front screen. Talks about it. Uh, scheduling, testimonials, how to contact, but then there's the pricing. So I, I scroll yep. through here and I look down and I go, $2,000 a day? Mm -hmm. What the heck? Like that's a that's that's steep, Marty. Like, but but then you explain it. So, uh, I've always been big in uh, on uh, and now my mouse just stopped working. Oh, there we go. Uh, when it comes to fishing, that it doesn't matter how much time you spend on the water. You could spend twenty hours a day on the water for a year, but if I do that playing darts or bowling, and I'm not bowling right or throwing the darts right or practicing golf right, I'm not going to get any better. I'm just still going to be out there hacking. Right. It's your what you pay for for the lessons is learning how to get better, what you need to get better at, and intentional practice so you're improving on the water. That's what I think Lee and Polinick and Wheeler and all those guys who got into this when they're 18 to 21 years old was, yeah, they spent a sh an ample amount of time on the water, but they were more efficient on that water than the average guy, so they were able to grow faster. Yeah, I completely agree. And when you look at the price on that, so let's go ahead and walk through that. There's going to be some time I'm spending with you as an angler prior to us getting here. I've got to understand you a little bit. I've got to know your strengths. I've got to know your weaknesses. I want to know your favorite lakes. I want to know your least favorite lakes. I want to know some things about you. And then I want to know your goals. So that's going to require some time investment on. I'm going to do the research on you that I do to all my Bass Pro Tour anglers. 
mm-hmm. and the guys that are an invitation that I cover. And I do an extensive amount of research on each and every angler I, I cover. I'll build a file. You're going to have a portfolio with me. So that's going to be step number one. Then we're going to schedule the date and time. We're going to get that worked out. Uh, if it's multi-day, you're going to probably be staying here at the house. We're going to talk about some industry-related stuff on that second, that, that first night that you're here. But now on the water, let's get to the lessons itself. Most good coaches, legitimate national coaches, are $200 an hour. Minimum. Minimum. I'm going to be spending 10 hours on the water with you. We're going to be 10 hours. Afterwards, we're going to have some conversations. We're going to have some email exchanges. And I'm sending you a full-scale evaluation based upon my 45 years experience. Again, this is not for everyone. You can go hire a guy for five to seven hundred dollars a day, and they do a great job. I'm not your guy, not your mm-hmm. babysitter. I'm here to make you better, and it's going to be a grueling, grueling day. And I'm going to be brutally honest because I'm going to look at your resume, and as you start out when you're fishing with me, I'm going to go, okay, what's the end goal? Is the end goal to be competitive? Is the end goal to be the next level? Is the end goal where is that end goal at? And based upon what I'm seeing. I can either tell you, yep, I think you're heading there, or no, you're not, and here's some modifications you need to make. Spinning rod and Ned rig, I'll tell you this. Name me the national events that's won on a spinning rod and Ned rig. Multi-day. The, the U.S. Five Open. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, I love you to death, but I don't think that's your end goal, okay? And if I know Roy Hawk, he probably, he might have won the U.S. Open on a spinning reel, no, but if I know him, he didn't. He probably threw a prank bait. Yeah, it, it's... It takes someone with some credibility to sit in the back of another man's boat and say, here's my recommendations. Here's the changes. And you've got to buy into what I'm selling. Yeah, uh, It's not for everybody. It is not for everybody. But for the few that do try, I truly believe I'm going to make them better. Could we do a little deal where you like uh, we record a little bit of your analysis of me and stuff, and then we do a little recap of it on on BTL, where you analyze my game after we're after we're done, and it's like an honest evaluation of hey, you know, where 100%. you're good at, what I need to work on, what my strengths are. Oh, you you bring whatever you want to put. You, we're going to do it in your boat. You bring whatever you want to put in there to record whatever. I'll yes, just hang on, come with thick skin. Oh, I'm not. Trust me. I've been on BTL and I've admitted that I'd, uh, I'd, uh, I didn't know what made a lead acid battery lead acid. And I've only been able to change a prop for three years. And there's certain stuff that I suck at. But what I found is there's a lot of people in the fishing where they get past that. They're established in their club or fish BFLs. And then you get past the point where you're like, dang, I can't ask that question or I'm going to look like an idiot. So I've kind of been the sacrificial lamb on a bunch of different stuff (laughs) that I should know after 15 years of this that I don't, but it, it connects with a certain demographic of the audience. And then when I stink, there's always that person who's like, well, hell yeah, that guy doesn't even know what a hell lead bass, lead acid battery is. And he's fishing the opens. No, nor do I. I just know I'm going to use them. So I'm I'm right there with you. I'll join that club. Uh, All right. I will say this. Uh, so I wanted to look to see what he's comparable at. I think golf is the most comparable at this. Obviously your resume, Uh, I mean, honestly, you're unparalleled with your resume on that. If you want a one day instructional class with uh, Butch Jones uh, or Butch Harmon, I mean, Butch Harmon, sorry. Butch Jones, I think, was Tennessee's old coach. That guy was always angry with the flat top. (laughs) (laughs) Remember, he he would always storm off. (laughs) He should have got the good haircut and he wouldn't have been as mad. Yeah. Anyway, um, $2,900. Now, you do get a night in Vegas with it, but $2,900 for one day of short game evaluation with Butch Harmon. With a short game. We're not talking about your complete game. What I'm yeah. going to do is I'm going to look at the complete game that you've got. And I, I'm good on the pricing. Uh, it, it Pricing will control volume. I've got a full-time job. I've got a yeah. really good full-time job. I've got to be careful. My goal is not to create 200 days a year doing this. That is yeah, not I hear you. But I wanted some situations where I could pass on what I know for the anglers that are receptive to this and, and want to try this. And, and Matt, I'll go back to this. You make it to the elite, so you make it to the Bass Pro Tour. What's the entry fee? Uh, yeah, that's kind of variable five year to plus. year, it seems, for the last. Five but you're plus. talking five grand. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> five grand. That's the entry fee yeah. for one event. If I make you a year better quicker, that's the best money you've ever spent. Yep. If I can speed you up one, two years, 
It's the best money. And I create a process that you can take from Florida to Carolinas to New York to Texas to California. If I help you start creating your process and you understand what that process is, that will be the best money you've ever spent. I like it. All right, we're going to take a final break. You good for one more segment? We'll wrap things up here, Marty. First of all, before we close this segment, so you're interested in this, people want to know more about it or anything, yep. best way to get in contact with you? Follow the website, go to the contact page. It's very simple. It's got an email that'll fire to me. I'll fire back. We'll exchange a few emails, and then at some point in time, we're going to get on the phone and talk about it. All right, martystone.com. Uh, yes, www.martystone.com. That's as simple as it gets to find the academy. All right, good stuff. All right, we're going to take our final break of the show when we come back, wrapping things up uh, with Marty Stone. BTL on a Tuesday. We'll be back right after this. Vibrating jigs are a great choice for any time of year, and the Kamikaze Swim On is a perfect match for any vibrating jig. Two sizes and the unique tail design gives it a bait fish profile and a great swimming action for realism. There are 17 colors. See them all at BigBiteBaits.com. The Spro Little John crankbait has been around for almost 15 years, and it is one of my go-to crankbaits whenever I need a fish in the boat, so you can never have enough new colors. That's why Spro is coming out with a handful of new colors, including Pearl Shad, which has this bleached out white look, but it's got this pearlescent, really, really pretty. We've got Copper Shad, which looks amazing in the water. It's got that purple flake on the back, really, really pops in the water. And then if you want some real pop, we've got Sparkle Shad, nothing but sparkles all over this thing. And then last but not least, we've got the matte sexy shad just a really different looking color for a crankbait so you want to give them a little different look that matte sexy shad is definitely the one to go with all these colors are available in the original little john and the md combining one of the most popular hook styles with gamakatsu's beefier superline offering the gamakatsu superline offset round bend delivers the strength necessary to target big fish in heavy cover. Well suited for braided line and heavier fluorocarbon, the Gamakatsu Superline Offset Round Bend is built using stronger Superline wire that allows anglers to easily fish a finesse worm around heavy cover. The Round Bend offers a larger bite area, perfect for any worm presentation, while increasing your hookup ratios. The newly enhanced Z-Bend holds your plastics on the hook longer, reducing the number of pull-offs and reducing damage to plastics. Available in 2-aught, 3-aught, 4-aught, and 5-aught, this is the most durable worm hook designed for heavier lines that hold your bait on longer. Preparation is key to success. And that preparation starts well before you ever hit the water. You're only as strong as your connection to the fish, and your line is that critical connection. Confidence in your line every minute, every day on the water, is a necessity, and failure, it's not an option. Sunline makes the fluorocarbon, nylon, and braided lines to give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. The new Android series is the peak of the Denali lineup and offers the ultimate Denali experience. The Android series features 36-ton multi-directional graphite combined with interlock blank technology for added strength. Each rod is outfitted with royal titanium guides that will not fail. The blank is fitted into an easy touch, soft feel EVA foam grip with exposed blank reel seat. This all allows the Android to transmit every movement of your bait and even the most subtle bites. The Android series is the finest rod Denali has ever made and offers an angler the ultimate fishing experience with a limited lifetime warranty. See the full lineup of Android rods at DenaliRods.com. Have you considered purchasing new electronics for your rig? The type of mounts you choose to protect your investment should be part of the decision-making process. No matter if you prefer one, two, or three graphs up front, Beatdown Outdoors has a solution for you. Adjustable, versatile, rigid, and made in the USA. What's your ultimate electronic setup? Check out the full selection of Beatdown Outdoors products by visiting beatdownoutdoors.com. Welcome back, BTL, on a Tuesday with Marty Stone and our resident, uh, our resident skeptic, Clay Williamson. Dude's on every show. Love Clay. Love his feedback. But he's like, hey, use code PANGRAC for that. No, 
MJS Academy does not sponsor BTL, me, the bass owner, or anything. This is completely unrelated. I just had him on. I thought it was an interesting thing. I wanted to grill him on the pricing. There was a lot going on with the BPT. It changes at MLF. It's info. You don't have to sign up for it. If you don't think it's for you, it's not for you. But no, this is not a sales pitch. Zero sponsorship relation whatsoever uh, to it. But I will take you up. I mean, if you're willing to, to spend a day with me on the water oh. after that. You come in as soon as you get done with the Bucks tournament, man. We're going to it, it, we either do it in front of the tournament or after the tournament because we got a lot of lakes up here. I'd love to I'd love to put you through it. Look, when you go to my website, one of the very first things you're going to read on there is me self admitting this is not for everybody, and I'm okay with that. I am okay. I did not design something for the masses, but there will be some, and there's already been some that see a value in that. And we're going to roll with it. We're going to see if I can make them a little bit better. And I do believe I can. I think we need just a, a show of BTL where the only questions asked are Clay Williamson questions. That would be the craziest <laughs> show in, <laughs> in I mean, the history man, I of the show. So I think that's, I, if I am not mistaken, that tournament is in May or sometime around May. Now, I've also been working with... Uh, Adam Bartuzek, who I fished the St. Jude with up at Wabasha, Minnesota. And I think the so I think that tournament's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday on Bugs Island. And the St. Yeah. Jude is a Saturday and a Sunday. Now, last year, I think uh, BTL and the Crappie Chronicles is Adam. I think we raised like six grand for St. Jude. I went to that tournament. Nice. It was the most well run uh uh, tournament that I had ever uh, attended and they raised like $750,000 for St. Jude. So wow. I think uh, what <laughs> I'm, I'm currently like in the process of doing this right now, but what I think I'm doing is I think I'm going to commit to that tournament. And if I miss, if I make the final day, which would be Friday, I would either have to take like a red eye overnight to make it Saturday or I'm going to drive 18 hours after Thursday's weigh-in to make the first day of the St. Jude in Minnesota because that's how bad I want to I want to fish that uh, that charity. Event. Nice. So we need to do we need to do this in front of the Bucks tournament, and then for you. Yeah, we'll figure out a time. Uh, we'll, we'll figure, figure out a time out. We'll to get it done. Uh, do, are you not doing uh, anal analysis for the team series stuff? Because I know they've been filming a bunch of those in the dark as far as where it is. We've seen what came out for the team series. I'm a big proponent of it. I like it. I think it's the most educational thing out there. Those guys don't even know the education and the information that they're given out by talking to each other in the headsets. Uh, but a, a real interesting format. But what's your involvement with the team series and what are your thoughts on that change from uh, the made-for-TV cups that you qualify for to yeah. the three-man team series that uh, General Tire sponsors and is now kind of taking its place moving forward? So I was a part of the pilot event that we had that we did down there in Florida. But now when we're going through how we're going to produce this, we're producing it more old school like the Slicks. And this is the first time since 2011 I've had any time off in the fall. I guess from the volume of TV that I've done this year, my boss decided I needed to get a little bit of time off. But no, I'm not involved in the actual day-to-day -day operations of that. I'm still involved in site selection. Uh, I get texts throughout the week of what's going on. I'm staying updated with who's doing well. I love the change. And, and here's why. I mean, we were 11, 12 years in running with this particular, with the Cup Series. Everything evolved. This was the next evolution. The team series, the one that I got to be a part of, the pilot event, I knew it was the right thing. I mean, you're watching. It was Michael Neal, uh, Skeet Reese, and uh, Brent Ayler, I believe, was on one of the team. Bobby Lane, Edwin Evers, and Chris Lane was on the team. To listen to the interaction of the teams, you don't need a color analyst there. You've got all the color analysts you need with those three groups. Skeet Reese, he was radio edit. It was hilarious what was coming out of him. So, now, I'm, I'm not a part. Uh, we'll see if that continues moving forward. I told them I'm only a phone call or a text away. I'll go on a dime if they need me there. But I'll be honest with you, I've enjoyed some time off this year. This year we had, I had 83 days of live. And what most people don't realize is we're nine-hour days. We basically did 166 college football games in one season with one crew 
the last two weeks or the last two events, we were we were trying to just stand people up. Our production crew is amazing. We do it with a small crew. It, it's uh, it's a family, but we were all tired, and I'm appreciative of the time off that I'm getting, but so I can prep for next season. How many days was that this past year? Eighty three days live. That's a lot of days, days for Chad to be in a wool three piece suit buttoned all the way to the top. To the to I hate him. His voice is perfect. The first time I ever met him, I heard him coming down the hall, and I'm like, wow, that's really good. And, but what he doesn't tell you on live is his wife gives him a list, and so does mine, gives him a list of what to wear and not to wear. And if we're not wearing what's on our list, both of our wives will text to us, you've got to be kidding. You are not following the script. My wife will call me out in a heartbeat. Really? So I've been used to hearing Chad since way before he came on with the BPT because he does OU sports. Yep. Yep. So when we were doing this way back in the day, Randy White, vice president of production, we were thinking about doing something live. He's like, I got the greatest color guy in the world. He'll be perfect. I've never met him. And then the year before we did in 2019, we all flew out to Tulsa. First time I ever met him and everything. And, And we're in a conference room and here comes Chad coming down the hall because of the OU connections, he's talking to everybody because mm-hmm. he remembers everybody. And you hear that voice. And the thing that I love about Chad is he's a sports guy, first and foremost. That's what he does. He didn't know anything about fishing, but he embraced it. And the beauty with Chad, especially at the very beginning, he knew what not to talk about. He just directed traffic. Get me and JT to the places we need to be. Get us in and out of breaks. But now he's taken on this sport he has some ownership he understands it more and more now you've got a true professional sports guy because i say he is the sound of bass fishing and then he's a traffic cop to two morons that's sitting there next to him that he tries to keep us in line but man we'll be on a six day 54 hour week and we're there in that last day and we're all just gassed and all of a sudden we come out of break and here comes butter Man, that voice is just, it's constant, it's good, it's professional. And I don't know where we'd be without him because I truly believe Chad McKee is the voice of bass fishing now. He's pretty good at it. I I, I give, I I mean, if you're, I understand why you're saying that. I I would be remiss if I didn't say, man, I, uh, Tommy Sanders gives, I, I would still have to go with Tommy Sanders overall just for the longevity of it. But those one two of are the biggest fans ever. Tommy Sanders. I remember one of the first times I ever worked with Tommy Sanders, and, and there's a thousand things I've got respect for Tommy. But we were we were doing something at, at JM Studios and everything, and then we were done. And then I turned around and I look, and there's Tommy getting up wire. There's Tommy doing the behind the scenes work, and I was like, wow, that's the most talented man in bass fishing that I've ever been around. And then when the camera shut off. Tommy never walked away. He was right in the middle of prepping or tearing down mm-hmm. everything else that was to be done. Tommy Sanders, I have the utmost respect for, and I think he's fantastic at his job. Tommy is a is a a person who has done a tremendous amount for the outdoors, first ballot Hall of Famer, incredible to the sport. McKee he's the first person we've ever had that's brought a sports sound to bass fishing. I'd agree with that. That, that, and they're, they're both great in their own right. Absolutely tremendous in their own right. But McKee's just, he's got that, that I don't know why I'm glad ESPN never gobbled him up, but he's got that sports mm-hmm. Monday night football, Tuesday night baseball voice. It's just for a sports fan perspective, he calls our game like a game. I agree. I 100% agree. I don't think people understand. So I've dabbled in it, Marty, right? I've, I've done, I've, right. I've guest hosted uh, uh, FLW tour. I've, I've jumped in on some of the, uh, some of the segments with, with both Bassmaster and FLW before. I, like I said, I did a full tournament with FLW uh, and uh, Peyote over there yep. uh, in 2019. Um, and, and I don't, think people realize and it was challenging it's very challenging it's more challenging than you think it is you go in and talk fishing but like you said you talk about the hours and i don't think people realize 
fishing is unique because there's there's such a, a short time limit on it. Golf is scripted. You know when you're going to talk, when you're not. The players aren't out there breaking down their shots where you can't talk over their audio. Uh, everything is fairly objective. There's so much subjectivity you have to deal with connectivity with the internet on it. You have anglers that might talk for five minutes and not talk. You're going live for nine hours. You have so many different... Uh, elements that go into it and uh you know with what uh with what uh bass live started and then went to flw and then the mlf uh live bpt on both the pro circuit and the and the bpt is right now in the fishing world the fans that are watching this whether it's the elite series or the bpt right. uh or uh e even throw in the uh, mpfl with what fat cat and luke duncan are doing over there i mean that's a live $5,000 entry free product that you can watch live take for granted, especially with the, with this, how smooth and seamless the production is because it is anything but easy for three commentators, guys on the water all over at internet to do it for eight hours and it to come across like a product that can be shown on national TV and still highlight the sponsors and the things that make it happen. One of our senior directors, one of his favorite saying is don't take automatic for granted. And, and, and we, we've got a lot of things we've got to get better uh, with the Bass Pro Tour or Major League Fishing or our live show. We know that. The, the constant challenge of not talking over anglers, not knowing when they're going to talk, when they're not going to talk, like you said. Because the fans didn't tune in to listen to me, JT, and Chad. They tune in to watch the really good ones. Our job is just to provide that analysis, provide some filler, hopefully add a little bit of humor, touch of education on the side. So it, it's a tough deal there. But what we do day in and day out, every week and the product that comes out of there starting with our camera operators all the way to the producers all the way to the directors all the way to the engineers to be able to get it from a water to a platform that the fans can see i remember matt and i'm going back you talking about back in the day i remember 2001 i was in the tulsa area and i was at jim wilburn's house and he, he had some folks over and that was our espn days george bodenheimer who was the president of espn that time we were standing around talking highly highly intelligent man, gifted in many, many rights. And that's when ESPN owned us. And he looked at every one of us during a conversation. He said, you guys, 2001, y'all are made for the internet. I don't know how to get you there, but that's what you're made for. That was a man that knew exactly where we needed to be in 01. But again, we didn't have the technology mm -hmm. to get us there. And now fast forward to 20, 2019, when we put it on there all the way to the day, it's come full circle. It's finally come full circle. So the things that we're doing, we've got to get better at. We know it. Hopefully we will. I've got a lot to learn. Thank goodness for Chad McKee because he teaches me something every day. The staff that's around me that make us look good is incredible. They're constantly teaching us more and more things about that. And then the fans, the fans, there's more instant feedback now than ever. So we pretty much understand where to go to to look for the direction to keep and improving the product and hopefully we can good stuff all right we're going to wrap things up drunkwood says i'll pay 2k to listen to marty rip on matt on the water uh, <laughs> and just to, just as a deal that i don't get anything for it if you guys are looking for a uh, a holiday gift that's unique that supports someone who supports the industry drunkwood takes uh he lives in kentucky his instagram handle is drunkwood in kentucky drunkwood i n k y and he takes full time he takes and purchases uh bourbon barrels and then repurposes them into uh really unique handcrafted uh art and stuff for us so like i got a, a package in my door and he had he had taken a bourbon barrel and it still smelled he said it was a uh a uh what's the kind with the red uh with the red wax around the top maker's mark i believe Maker's mark, yeah and yeah. i opened it and it, it smelled but it was it was in the shape of a jumping bass and it had my new house number on it oh that's too cool i mean yeah crazy. so he can do a bunch of custom stuff like that i know he's doing a bunch of stuff for the for the holiday season um but if you guys are are looking for anything the dude uh the dude is super cool uh and is very you know very uh knows a lot of guys in the industry but just support a small business right there drunkwood in kentucky i guess he has done something for him he made me a house number that looked like a jumping bass so i'll give him a that's shout out cool. for that but yeah, worth yeah. checking out it
anything else you want to get in here, Marty? I know it's been a long show. It's been an hour and 30. We could go three hours. We didn't really even get into the team deal. We didn't get into the ESPN days. We didn't get into, is this a sport and will it ever get big? And what happened when Irwin tried and when ESPN tried? And I feel like MLF tried that, especially right off. We didn't get get into all that. We're not going to get into it this show. Uh, But will you come back on and maybe dive into that again in, in a future episode of BTL, Marty? Sounds like we need at least a part two, possibly a part three. And all you got to do is let me know, man. This is a great time of year for me to be able to do this. I, I enjoy this. Uh, it's what I live for. I love the challenging questions. I think you've got a lot of great topics that you just mentioned that somebody needs to address. They really do. So let's you and I plan a date. And let's jump in. And let's do it. That works. Usually I do a final segment by myself, but I'm just going to take you out as we do it. This has been another edition of BTL Bass Talk Live on a Tuesday tomorrow. Probably one of the, well, the world's foremost authority who is an active tournament fisherman on antique lures, Bernie Schultz. I teased it before. He sent me a lure from 1938. It's got like fans and all sorts of stuff in it. And I said, hey, that's going to be a best of show product next year. And I Bernie was 20 at 1938, too. And you can tell him I said that. Yeah, the dude doesn't age. He's like got the, he's the Benjamin Button of bass fishing. Marty will be back in just a second. I can't bring him out on a, I can't bring him out on a black screen. There we go. There we go. The Benjamin Button of bass fishing. Bernie Schultz, that's a compliment. Tomorrow on BTL. All right, that's it. We will see you guys. Thanks, Marty. Thanks, Matt. Had a great time, man. All right. We'll see you guys later.